The grid dip oscillator, also called a grid dip meter, dip meter, or just dipper, is an instrument used to measure resonant frequency of radio circuits. It's an oscillator whose output energy changes in the vicinity of a resonant circuit, which is tuned to the frequency the oscillator generates. Grid dip oscillators were first developed in the 1920s and were built with vacuum tubes. The devices measured the value of the tube's grid current, which dipped when tuned to resonance, hence the name grid dip meter. Modern grid dip meters use solid state devices rather than tubes and so are correctly called dip meters. Dip meters have been widely used by amateur radio operators for measuring the properties of resonant circuits, filters, and antennas. Applications include measuring the resonant frequency of a tuned circuit, measuring the frequency of an oscillator, acting as a signal source for adjusting radio circuits, measuring inductance, capacitance, and Q or quality factor, acting as a field strength meter, and testing antennas and transmission lines. Heathkit sold a number of grid dip meters over the years. Like most of their products, they were sold in kit form. The first Heathkit grid dip meter was the GD1 coming on the market in 1951. It was replaced in 1952 by the slightly improved GD1A, which in turn was replaced by the further improved GD1B in 1954. The GD1B was produced until 1960. In 1961, the HM10 tunnel dipper was introduced. It used the relatively uncommon semiconductor tunnel diode rather than a tube. The HM10A replaced it in 1962 and was produced until 1970. The solid state dip meter HD1250 came on the market in 1975 and was produced until 1991. The HD1250 is similar to many dip meters offered by different manufacturers over the years. It uses seven changeable coils to cover the range of 1.6 to 250 megahertz. A dial scale indicates frequency. A level control adjusts the output level of the oscillator and a sensitive 150 microamp meter indicates the dip or peak in signal level during use. It uses two transistors and runs from a 9 volt battery. A headphone jack is provided which can be used to listen in to a signal which is modulated. A 1977 Heathkit catalog lists it for a price of $59.95 and says you can build it in one evening. Here is the HD1250. It comes with a sturdy plastic case that stores the meter and coils. Each coil covers a specific frequency range and is color coded. The user can make their own coils if desired. The unit can be held and operated in one hand. This is the power switch. The level control here adjusts the output level as can be seen on the meter. The tuning dial adjusts the frequency which can be read on the dial scale. The headphone jack is here although it is rarely used. A user assembled pickup coil can be used for coupling the dip meter to a circuit under test. The dip meter can be operated in two modes, injection mode and absorption mode. Let's take a look at an example of injection mode. In this case we want to measure the resonant frequency of an LC circuit. The dip meter provides or injects the signal. I've connected a coil and capacitor in parallel forming a tuned circuit. From the values used the resonant frequency should be around 20 MHz. I select the appropriate coil in this case 12.5 to 26 megahertz. We couple the meter by placing it near the tuning circuit coil. And adjust the frequency until the level meter dips. In this case, the dial reads about 25 megahertz, the resonant frequency of the coil. Now let's look at absorption mode to measure the frequency of a signal source. In this mode, the dip meter receives or absorbs the signal from an external circuit. I've connected a signal generator to another coil and set it to about 5 megahertz. 
we put the 3.2 to 6.6 .6 megahertz coil in. I turn the level down to almost zero and then couple the coil to the dip meter. We see a strong peak when we reach the generator frequency at just about 5 megahertz. As a final demonstration, let's see an application as a field strength meter. I'm using a 2 meter band handheld ham radio transceiver to generate a signal. I've used the highest frequency coil 100 to 250 megahertz. And I've adjusted the tuning until I get a peak at the transmission frequency of approximately 146 megahertz. Holding the dip meter near the handheld using the pickup coil when I'm transmitting we can see a strong signal on the meter. Moving around I can measure the field strength getting information about the antenna's characteristics. I often use my dip meter as a signal source for testing receiver circuits. I've used it to neutralize the final amplifier in my Heathkit DX60B ham radio transmitter. To be honest, because I have a wide assortment of different test equipment, I don't use the dip meter a lot. Some people have a dip meter for nostalgic reasons. When researching this video, I came across the website of Ed Tanton of Marietta, Georgia. He collects dip meters and has 64 different models. The dip meter seems to have been a neglected piece of test equipment and historically not many people knew exactly what it was used for. In his book Tube Testers and Classic Electronic Test Gear, Alan Douglas says the dip meter is the single most versatile test equipment for RF use. Any single function can probably be better performed by a specialized instrument, whether it's a frequency generator, frequency counter, or LC meter, but no one other low-cost instrument can be used for so many functions. And in fact, dip meters are still being manufactured today, little change from the designs from the 1940s, other than using solid state components. One example would be the MFJ201 from MFJ Enterprises, which is almost identical to the Heathkit unit. I hope you enjoyed this video about a lesser known piece of test equipment. Watch my other videos about vintage ham radio and test equipment.